More than a century has passed since the time when carrier-based biplanes barely came off the wooden decks of aircraft carriers, when no one had even thought that supersonic jets would soon dominate the skies. However, the evolution of aviation, much like technological progress in general, is inexorable, and today the U.S. Navy is preparing to make yet another revolution in military aircraft manufacturing by developing its sixth-generation fighter FAXX. In this video, we'll be trying to figure out how things are going with this aircraft, and how the military is preparing to surprise us. After trying long and hard for decades to get every U.S. fighter ever built to operate from aircraft carriers, the U.S. Navy is determined to develop its next sixth-generation stealth fighter separately from the U.S. Air Force specifically for use on its ships. FAXX is the designation given to the program to develop and acquire a future air superiority fighter that will replace the U.S. Navy's aging fleet of 4.5-generation FA-18EF Super Hornet fighters and become a reliable ally for the current fleet of F-35C stealth fighters. The FAXX is part of the overall effort by the U.S. Navy and Air Force to develop America's sixth fighter is part of one of the military's most ambitious programs, Next Generation Air Dominance. Next Generation fighter concepts began spreading like wildfire even before the U.S. perfected its F-35. However, the first more or less official news of the future Navy fighter can be considered the option proposed by Boeing in 2009. The company showed the concept of a stealth twin-engine tailless jet with a mixed wing and a cockpit designed for two pilots. Although the latter did not mean that Boeing's brainchild would not be able to operate in an unmanned mode. According to the team, this feature was available in their concept but depended only on the mission of the fighter set by the command. After another four years, Boeing updated its original project. It was still the same tailless stealth fighter in the 40,000-pound weight class, now with a front fin that further reduced the effective area of reflection of enemy radars. It also has supersonic air intakes without diverters, reminiscent of those we've already seen on the F-35 Lightning II. Between these announcements from Boeing, in 2011 the U.S. Department of Defense was still announcing plans to replace 556 aging FA-18CD Hornets with 220 new F-35 fighters. However, by the spring of 2012 the U.S. Navy published an official request for information on the FAXX program. It announced plans to develop and produce a multi-role air superiority fighter designed to replace the remaining carrier-based EA-18G growlers in service and completely displace the FA-18EF Super Hornets, which will reach their planned 9,000-hour flight life in time for the early 2030s. The FAXX fighter's primary mission range includes not only air combat, but also ground attack, surface warfare, and close air support. Requirements for the aircraft include first and foremost supercruise capability, advanced stealth capabilities against the most advanced enemy radars, and the best possible sensors and network adaptive radars. Among the additional wants of the command that were mentioned, in-flight refueling, reconnaissance, surveillance and target acquisition RSTA, as well as electronic warfare equipment. While the Air Force and Navy are working on their next-generation fighters separately, both will feature supercruise flight in 35,000 to 40,000 pound-feet 156 to 178 kilonewtons thrust engines as a result of the next-generation adaptive propulsion program. The American military had a lot of trouble with this, by the way. The U.S. Air Force's adaptive versatile engine technology advent program was initially responsible for developing adaptive cycle aircraft engines. These were intended for the next generation bomber, NGB, but uncertainty in the program led Rolls-Royce, one of the main developers of the project, to decide that these engines would be suited for a potential upgrade of the F-35 Lightning II. Then, in 2012, Advent was replaced by the Adaptive Engine Technology Demonstrator, AETD, which was already the responsibility of other leading engine manufacturers, General Electric and Pratt & Whitney. GE even managed to set a new record for the highest demonstrated compressor and turbine temperatures during its work. By 2016, work on variable cycle engines continued under the auspices of a program called Adaptive Engine Transition Program AETP. It was only after AETP that the next-generation adapter propulsion NGAP, program was launched, 
whose participants, General Electric and Pratt and & Whitney, are still working on new propulsion systems for the future of American aviation, the XA-102 and XA-103. Speaking about its next-generation aerial platform, representatives of the U.S. Navy have repeatedly emphasized the importance of introducing technologies such as maximum sensor connectivity and an electronically configurable smart shell into it. The first refers to highly advanced communications and sensor technologies, which include the ability to connect to satellites, other U.S. Navy and Air Force aircraft, and all allied devices that transmit information about what's happening on the battlefield in real time. A smart scan, in turn, involves having better sensors and electronics integrated into the fuselage of the aircraft itself to improve sensor performance while reducing drag and increasing the fighter's speed and maneuverability. And in order to increase the efficiency of avionics and ensure the introduction of the latest weapons, the military insists on creating a device with an open architecture and even cooler than the F-35. This will allow the fighter systems such as sensors, payloads and weapons to be customized to suit the needs of a specific mission or even rotate them, changing them before each flight if the command assigned several completely different tasks to the aircraft in a day.